God don't have a whole lot of weaponry, a bunch of swords and staves and all that stuff. His weapon is in his mouth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When he speaks, my God, my God, hallelujah. Glory to God. I saw your gaze upon the Lord. Let's look to the Word of God. I'm going to read just uh, two verses in 1 Peter chapter 2. I'll read the first one and the last one. Let's read together. Verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light together which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy let's give God thanks hallelujah glory thank you father thank you Lord hallelujah glory to God bless the Lord our Father, we thank you for showing that mercy toward us. We were not a people, but now we are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy. Lord, without mercy, we couldn't be here. There'd be no forgiveness, Lord, if, if there was no mercy, Father. We would be charged for all of our sins, wiped out, Lord God, our ancestors wiped out, but mercy. Thank you for giving, showing your mercy. We honor you right now and give you praise. Take control, have your way, be lifted up, be honored in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Come on, let's thank him again. He's worthy before you see him. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. God bless you. I hope some of you got a chance to look at the special. We had a special um, was adver advertised all week long, and uh, we appreciate the uh, um, my TV too for all that they, they uh, have done. Thank God for our editor and cameraman as well. Mike Saunders, thank you so much. Praise the Lord. You are here for a purpose. My God, you are here for a purpose. You're not an accident. You're not a mishap. You are purposed by the Almighty God. God purposed our lives. Thank God. Bible. As I was reading in 1 Peter 2, and I read, you're a chosen generation. And when I got to the next phrase, a royal priesthood, I felt the Spirit of the Lord speaking to me and saying and reminding me that you are of kingly ancestry. You are, this is how he brought it to me, of kingly ancestry. That's your ancestry. Your ancestry is not a father or a grandfather that was so disobedient and whatever the case may have been in this natural. 
We said earlier that you were purposed by the Almighty, right? And God said to Jeremiah, I knew you before you were formed in the womb. So he reminded me that you are of kingly ancestry. There is royalty in your blood. You're not just a happening. And so I believe he wanted me to bring this before you today. That you are far beyond what you are giving yourself credit to be through God. You are of kingly ancestry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I believe God wants us to grasp, grab a hold of it in a very significant way. Because as we believe, so shall we operate based on our belief. And as I thought on the thought that you're of kingly ancestry, the thoughts begin to come to my mind. And Peter says you are a royal priesthood. Uh, uh, you are of the seed royal. My goodness. A kingdom of priests. A kingdom of intercessors. A kingdom, you remember the, the work of the priests in the Old Testament? That, that, that they were there to take the offerings that the people offered for sin offering and a thank offering or free will offerings. And they would take the offering and slay it and take the blood and, it was in, and the, the high priest would take it from there after the blood was, uh, that was offered. But the offering up, the sacrifices that were made were purposeful and the priests were they that were the go-betweens. On behalf of God, they were to intercede, right? To take the offering, and then they would do what were, was prescribed by Moses, and the Levites. Well, in a similar way, we are a kingdom of priests. We have a special assignment from God as we have been brought out of darkness. Sin and ignorance and in the bondage or under Satan's grip, we've been delivered. His grip and power over our lives have been totally broken. So God freed us now for a divine purpose. We are called by his name, children of God, right? And we are of his ancestry. And so then the second thought came... Now, let's take a moment and look at our ancestor, right? Remember the Bible said concerning Seth, after Adam sinned, and there came Cain and Abel, Abel I'm sorry, Cain and Abel, and, ate, and Cain uh, slew Abel, and so there went off a, a division, violence began to just move up throughout the earth. Until Adam had another son called Seth. And the Bible dis distinctly said, Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Here started again this godly line that was put out by Cain. And it was through that godly line that Christ came. All the way down through the generations. And so, if we visit our ancestry, God is our father. And he brought to me uh, a few statements, and I want to read them. first one is found in 1 Timothy 6.15, where Timothy said that Jesus Christ was the only... Potentate. 
He says, he says, verse 15, concerning the people of God, which in times past, or God, he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, king of kings, and lord of lords. This is our ancestor, all right? Who only hath immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach to, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. We are of the seed royal. We are of the seed royal. Now I'm going to take my time. I just want us to grasp what the Lord wants us to get. So if we look at our ancestor, we see that the word says he is the king of all kings. It means he's above all kings. He's above all lords and vassals. He's above all of that. The Bible points it out in Timothy. Now I want you to go with me. Uh, look at the Malachi chapter 1. Right, just a few scriptures here because, uh, uh, um, you know, we're not just here spinning out hot air, right? <laughs> we, it is the word of God that we speak. Malachi chapter 1. Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament as we know it here. Malachi was dealing with Israel's attitude toward him with their offerings. They didn't really understand the honor and respect that was due God. Verse 4, uh, let's see. No, I'm still in Matthew, I'm sorry. Matthew, Malachi uh, 14 says, But cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male, and voweth, and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. God reminded them, you don't offer me any kind of sacrifice. You don't, don't give me something that uh, your, even your governors wouldn't, wouldn't have. Don't give me something that even you wouldn't offer. You know, it's just something that, uh, you know, don't, don't offer a, a, a lamb that's his leg is broke, he's been bruised, he's puny, he hadn't been nourished well, and he's sickly. Don't, don't give that to me. I'm a great king. And then verse 6 in chapter 1, he says, A son honors his father. And a servant honors his master, right? If then I be a father, where is my honor? If I be a master, where is my fear, my reverence, said the Lord of hosts. This priest, you despise my name, and he go on to say it. But he's calling them to reverence and respect for the great God of the ages. God is so great and so magnificent until the splendor of his glory and his light, no man can approach him. He dwells in unapproachable light. He is that great and marvelous and mighty. And he is so humble that he can stretch forth himself to come down and associate with mortal man. Somebody all to pause and let's give God some praise. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. He's a great God. Now look quickly in Revelation chapter 17. Getting to look at our ancestor. You know, some have, as I was worshiping him and he was talking to me in this verse concerning this kingly of kingly ancestor 
fester. He, he was saying, no, you, 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 you are not just of your father, C.P. Herring. No, 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 no. You, no, you, you, you are of kingly ancestry. I'm your father. And you need to understand that. Ah, glory to God. You, you, you can get hung up. Well, well my, my father was this, and, and so I guess I got to fight this and so on. But there's royalty in your blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, verse chapter 17 in Revelations. Verse 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of Lord. Oh, glory. Woo. My God. Mm. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Glory. Glory. Woo. Mm. Help that one, Lord. He is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Ah, glory to God. That's who he is. That's your ancestor. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm, 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 mm. Move over a little further to chapter 19. Look at verse 11. And I saw heaven open. Behold a white horse. He that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Woo! You wondering, is God going to come through you? Is he going to do what he said he's going to do? Look at him. His name was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness does he judge and make war. He don't, he don't judge in unrighteousness. He judge in righteousness. When he call a spade a spade, it's a spade. My God. Verse 12 says, his eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. And my, ooh, glory. Mm. <laughs> if you ever wonder why on his head was many crowns because he became victor over every situation and every power glory to God my God glory to God glory Ooh, glory glory, glory. Oh, glory. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesta dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Hallelujah. No, it, it didn't stop there. And, it, and the armies which were in heaven followed after him upon white horses. Ah, uh, look at somebody say, we in that crowd. <laughs> Clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he, he should smite the nations. Uh, you, you know, I, I need to pause here. God don't have a whole lot of weaponry, a bunch of swords and staves and all that stuff. His weapon is in his mouth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When he speak, my God, my God, hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo. Mm. Glory to God. Ah, glory to God. <laughs> Woo. Ah, glory to God. The Bible says, out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That with it he should smite the nations and he should rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. This is your ancestor. Let's pause and thank him. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, and then he reminded me, he said, I'm rich. I'm rich in mercy. I'm rich in goods. I'm rich in substance. I'm rich in wisdom and knowledge. I'm rich, he said. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo. Psalm 24 said, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he founded upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo. Glory. God. Thank you, Lord. He said, I'm rich. Glory to God. Then as I look at Psalm 50, he says something else here. Glory to God, Psalm 50, verse 10 through 12. Verse 10 says, For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I wouldn't tell thee. For the world is mine. Ooh, glory to God in the fullness thereof. Can, can, can you give him some thanks or praise or something? My God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. I'm so glad I'm of kingly ancestry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Ooh, glory. To God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be reminded, you know. Sometimes we get buried down in our service and we forget. Oh, my God, we're connected to the vine. My God, we thank you. There's a, there's a little passage in Haggai. I'm going to see if I can read there. Haggai chapter 2. I have to, I don't visit those chapters very often, so I have to try to remember where they're located. Haggai chapter 2. Look what he says in verse 8. The silver is mine. And the gold is mine. Said the Lord of hosts. Am I making it clear enough? Hallelujah. God says I'm rich. Hallelujah. Rich in mercy. Rich in goods. Rich in substance. Rich in wisdom. Rich in knowledge. Oh really God. Uh, let, let me go a little bit further. Ephesians 2. 4. Said, but God who is rich in mercy. Got enough mercy for me today, tomorrow, every day of my life. You hear what I'm saying? In Colossians chapter 2. Christ in whom are hid. What? Are you there? All right, Colossians 2, verse 2 and 3. Where he said, With their hearts, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, to all, and, and, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Oh, my Rashanda. Glory to God. He said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and upbraid it not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor say, he's rich, neighbor. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He's rich. <laughs> 
Uh, and then the, the third thing that he reminded me, not only that uh, King of kings and Lord of lords, when we're looking at the, our ancestor God, and not only is he rich, but he says, your father and my father is not the natural father uh, uh, that God wants us to focus in on. Hallelujah. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. It's got limitations. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Unlimited potential. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then uh, as we, we, we visited briefly our, uh, uh, the look at our ancestor God who was serving the second thing that he wanted me to see, no, 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 before I go there, let me say, this is what he said also concerning your father's not my, uh, and my father's not the natural, is not the one that you should really know about in this sense. It is God our father. And then, First Peter says, we've been born Again, right? Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withers, fades, the flower fades away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Yeah. We're born of incorruptible seed. Come on, let's pause and give him some praise again. Yeah. Hey, he, he deserves the glory due his mighty name. We're born again of God. The seed royal. The royal seed, if you will. We're born of God. It means we've got to think differently now. We can't think the same way. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. Oh, I feel like preaching. I saw your care. Father 